Play to earn NFTs. What are they? What do they consist of? How do they work? And most importantly, how can you make some money with them? At their most basic level, play to earn NFTs are online games centered around rewarding players with a utility token for playing. Couple that with your go-to blockchain network, assets that players can find in-game such as weapons, armor, skins, or even vehicles that are showcased as NFTs, then we can thank Epic Games and Fortnite for changing the landscape for how rare in-game items work. However, play-to-earn NFTs do it a bit differently when it comes to owning something. Unlike Fortnite, where if a player wanted a skeleton skin but missed out on the time frame to get it, they were either out of luck had to wait for Epic to unretire the skin, or if they were really, really insecure and wanted to impress their classmates at lunch, they'd take their dad or mom's credit card and buy another gamer's account who had that very skin. Of course, then they'd run the risk of inheriting a new gamer tag with a slew of friends who suddenly speak Vietnamese, as well as seeing their parents certainly question why a credit card charge of $600 suddenly appeared. Well, with play to earn NFTs, you're not having to deal with the hassle of buying another person's account and online identity just to get the thing you missed out on. As the name implies, you have to play to earn. Beat levels, defeat bosses, claim victory in some battles, and chalk up those achievements under your belt in the way the game developers intended you to. Because as your reward, tossed your way will be the in-game NFTs either by earning or in some cases buying. Now, in a case like Fortnite, you either had to be there to get the rare skin items or miss out completely, but this is not the case with play to earn NFTs. You can expect to see some of these bought and sold in third party marketplaces online like OpenSea. So what games are doing this? What games are play to earn and which ones are actually working already? Even though it's not widely talked about, there's a bunch of play to earn games that already exist. One game that's gaining some serious traction is called Raid Party, which is an MMO game on the Ethereum blockchain whose sole purpose revolves around play to earn mechanics. As put by the game developers, players join what they're calling The Raid, which is a massive dungeon in which only a single boss is present at all times. A player's party is the team that they enter the dungeon with, and that's gonna consist of one hero NFT and a limited number of fighter NFTs. And in true hack and slash fashion, players join forces to beat down a baddie, and as victory is on the horizon, they earn what devs are calling CFTI, which is the utility token earned by completing these raids, which then in turn allows players to mint new NFTs, or if they so choose, enhance their current NFT characters to boost up that resale value. Now, of course, you can also keep that CFTI token and trade that for a wrapped Ethereum or Ethereum and try to earn value that way. Another popular play to earn NFT game going on right now is Gods Unchained. Gods Unchained is an online trading card game that is both strategy based and built within Ethereum's blockchain. As you can expect, each of the game's trading cards are actually NFTs and their value fluctuates based on the game's own cryptocurrency, which is appropriately titled Gods. And much like the real world counterpart of Magic the Gathering and Pokemon trading card game, players can expect to drop a hefty sum to pick up some of the game's more rare cards. At the moment, these cards are worth $200 or more, which does sound like a lot of money, but in the NFT space, to be honest with you, it's still not that much just yet. The cards you earn in game, you can actually take and turn into to more valuable ones, selling them as bona fide NFTs. And in true play to earn fashion, players can hope to get some more rare cards by partaking in the weekly tournaments where expansion packs can be earned and awarded. For those players who like to explore, do some digging, and some classic in-game grinding, you might want to check out another game called Alien Worlds. This play to earn NFT game pits you up against a galaxy of worlds looking to be mined for their resources, which are also NFTs. You start off with just a shovel, but as you progress, you earn digital bucks, which you can then trade for mining materials. At the moment, the game boasts about 330 NFTs, which players can mine and collect, and then of course resell. I once tried to mine stuff in the real world in my backyard, but ended up digging into a gas line. And long story short, you can still see the crazy that was on my childhood home in Google Maps. But for all the cozy aficionados out there, my Animal Crossers, you have not been forgotten. The game My Neighbor Alice is set to be released later this year, and it's tapping into that Farmville school of thought, bringing back the fold of appeal of managing your own virtual farmland. In order to get started, you're gonna need to buy up some NFT land, 
of which there's only a limited number of, which means potential resale value. Then you have islands to purchase, and then you can start throwing in some trees, vegetables, animals, houses. And once you have all the essential things, you can start throwing some fluff of decorations and outfits and other stuff like that. But the question remains is how is My Neighbor Alice play to earn? Well, simply put, the game devs are implementing a reputation system that quite literally rewards players for being tidy landowners. So in this case, it pays to be clean and proper and organized as it could net you some funds to buy and sell NFTs and maybe even a real life island of your own. The final game I have for you today is called Freaks and Guilds. It just came out last week and I've already been playing it since. Right now, it's super bare bones and it's a passive type play to earn game. Basically, you use your freaks, which consists of three different species, trolls, ogres, and fairies, to stake in different campaign arenas to yield Freak Bucks, or FBX. You will also need a Celestial, which is sort of like the leader of your Freak army. Now, as you can see, Freaks earn a preset number of Freak Bucks in different arenas each day, and every 72 hours, these arenas change. When you want to cash out your Freak Bucks, you actually need to pay a 20% tax on those Freak Bucks that you're taking out. At the time of making this video, there is no liquidity pool for Freak Bucks, meaning that you can't cash them out for other forms of currency like Wrapped Ethereum or Ethereum. But you can use your Freak Bucks to mint a Gen 1 Freak for 2,000 Freak Bucks per Freak, that's a lot of Freaks, which will further grow your army of Freaks and allow you to compound how many Freak Bucks you can earn each day. As a quick example, I currently have about 25,000 Freak Bucks just from staking my Freaks and Celestials from day one. Now if I used all of those Freak Bucks to go and mint more Gen 1 Freaks, I could generate about 12 more of those freaks, aka 12 more NFTs. Then if I additionally stake those NFTs, it would yield an additional 4,400 freak bucks per day. The quick math says that it would take me about six days to recoup that spending. And then instead of earning 4,000 freak bucks per day, like I currently do, I would actually be generating 8,800 freak bucks every single day, which essentially doubles my freak bucks daily production for the long run. Eventually, there will be battling, which will open up even more possibilities within this game. Now, even though it looks aesthetically bare bones, there's a few reasons I like this game. Reason number one is it's still quite early in this game and the barrier to entry is actually pretty low. The floor freaks are selling between 0.02 and 0.03 Ethereum, which at the current moment is under $100 for the most part. This is much more reasonable for the average player to get in compared to some other play to earn games right now. Number two, being early to the game, at least where the NFT space is right now, is a absolutely major advantage. If you join big games like Raid Party or Ether Orcs, even just a few weeks or months after launching, it's a major disadvantage and usually it costs way more to get up to speed in those games. In other words, it can be much more risky if you're really trying to yield profit from the game you're playing. From what you saw in today's video, it's probably pretty obvious that gaming is not even close to great in the blockchain and play to earn space quite yet. I do think that this year we'll have some cool little games that will make some players really great returns, but when it comes to top tier games, we're just not there yet. And in order to get there, we do have to go through this phase of high volatility and some games that might be great and some games that might be trash, and it's very hard to know which is which. All of this has to happen before we get to really great games and major adoption for AAA studios to make blockchain games. I want to know in the comments down below what play to earn NFTs are you looking at and which ones have gotten your attention. As always, remember to leave a like on the video, subscribe if you want to see more, and have a fantastic day. We'll see you next time.